Let us stand. And one of our servers here this morning is divine service setting three without Holy Communion, starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Remember not the sins of my youth, or 
Testament reading for this 17th Sunday after Pentecost, recorded for us in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel, starting with the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right. He shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet, the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O oh, house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore, I will judge you, O oh, house of Israel. Everyone, according to his ways, declares that the Lord God, repent, and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading for us this morning, recorded for us in the second chapter of Philippians, starting with the first verse. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
of you tell me the answer, but I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discuss it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answer Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord.
faith in Matthew, the blessed apostle, on the inspiration of the Spirit. We find a theme of this morning quotation is God's authority. Your Jesus and my Jesus holds the office of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because he holds that office, all power and authority in the heavens and the earth belong to him. In his love and grace and mercy, he shares that power and authority with people here on earth. And in order to maintain good order and to do it properly, he does so through offices. Offices are important. Offices determine who does what when and where and how. And offices carry with them duties and responsibilities and also power and authority. So let's say that you get sick. You acquire a viral or bacterial infection. So you go to the doctor. The doctor examines you, and the doctor writes out for you a prescription for antibiotics. You take that prescription, and you go to a pharmacist. And the pharmacist fulfills that prescription to you. And you buy it, and you take the antibiotics, and you get well. Normally, only one who holds the office of being a medical doctor can write out a prescription for drugs and antibiotics. Normally, only a licensed pharmacist can give you the drug and antibiotic you need. They have the power and the authority to do so because they hold the office. You've done something wrong, big time. And now you are arrested. And now you have to undergo a trial. You will encounter a person who holds the office of judge. That judge will preside over your trial. And if you are found guilty, that judge will sentence you to prison time or jail time. Only a person who holds the office of judge can do that. Only they can sentence someone to do jail time or prison time. Because only they have the power and the authority. Only they hold the office. I hold the office of the public ministry. I have been called and sent by Christ the Good Shepherd to be his under shepherd. So I'm the one who consecrates the elements in Holy Communion. And as I consecrate the elements according to the words and the promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he joins his body to the bread and his blood to the wine. So as you partake of the Blessed Sacrament of Holy Communion, you receive the true body of Christ, the true blood of Christ, and forgiveness of your sins. We just went through a holy absolution. Because of my office, I am the one who proclaims to you that in his stead and by his command, according to my office, I forgive you your sins for the sake of Christ. I do that because I hold the office of the public ministry. I have the power and the authority to do that. All those offices, along with the power and authority, go back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and will always be the King of Kings, and will always be the Lord of Lords, always having all power and authority in all the heavens and all the earth, even for all of eternity. This brings us to the Gospel lesson for today. In the Gospel lesson for today, we find our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who also holds the office of the promised Messiah. And now we find 
Miguel, in Herod's temple, in the holy city of Jerusalem, executing the duties and responsibilities of his office of the promised Messiah, proclaiming the good news to the poor, proclaiming to them that also their sins are forgiven. And of course, the temple Pharisees, the chief priests and elders, came up to him and began to listen to him and watch him. They were not there to learn. They were not there to receive the forgiveness of their sins. They were Pharisees. They believed that they were without sin. They had no need for forgiveness of sins, and they had no faith in Jesus as the promised Savior. They were there to trick him and trap him and cause him to stumble and fall. They followed Jesus relentlessly for the three years of their ministry, and that's what they did. So they had two questions concerning Jesus and his power and authority. The first was this. By what power and authority, Jesus, do you do the things that you do? And the second one is this. Just exactly where did that power and authority come from? What they were asking Jesus was really this. By what power and authority, Jesus, do you heal the sick? Do you give sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf and cause the lame to walk and cleanse the lepers and cast out demons and resurrect people from the dead? Proclaim the good news to the poor. Proclaim forgiveness of sins. Jesus, by what power and authority do you do these things, and where did that power and authority come from? This put Jesus between a rock and a hard place because of time. It was not his time to be arrested. It was not his time to be crucified. It was too early in his ministry. So Jesus said to the temple Pharisees, Tell you what, I'm going to ask you a question, and if you can answer my question, I will answer your question. And the temple Pharisees said, Shoot, go ahead. What is your question? Now Jesus turned the tables on them and asked the same question back to them, but now using another person and another event. The person was St. John the Baptist. The event was baptism. So Jesus asked the temple Pharisees, so concerning St. John the Baptist and his baptism, where did he get the power and authority to baptize? Did it come from God in heaven? Or did it come from man? Only one of two answers to be had. Now this put the temple Pharisees between a rock and a hard place. They could not say from God in heaven. Because they realized the face of that. The next question Jesus would ask them is, so then why did you, the temple Pharisees, when you went out to check out St. John the Baptist at the River Jordan, and he told you to repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, then why did you not repent? See your sin, own your sin, have sorrow for your sin, and confess your sin. And when St. John the Baptist said, come on down and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, then why were you not baptized? The actions of the Pharisees betrayed who they were, what they were, and where they were. They believed they were without sin. They had no need for the forgiveness of sin. They did not have faith in Jesus as Lord and 
Savior and Redeemer. So they and everybody else knew they could not say, St. John the Baptist baptized from power and authority given from God in heaven. Could not go there, could not say that. But also they could not say the power and authority of St. John the Baptist came from man because they were surrounded by the common people, the oi polloi with faith, who understood the power of St. John the Baptist to baptize came from God in heaven because he was the last of the Old Testament prophets, the one who had turned the hearts and minds of the Jews, prepared them to be ready to receive Jesus as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and their promised Messiah. So they could not say man, or their crowds would turn upon them, and assault them, and assail them, hurt them and harm them, drag them out of the temple, and probably kill them. So they could not say man. So they said the only answer they could. We don't know. Good answer. Honest answer. Because they didn't know. The only way they could know that the power and authority came from God in heaven who had Jesus do what he did. And all those signs and miracles affirm and confirm that Jesus is the promised Messiah. But they did not have faith. So they also could not say from God in heaven. So Jesus turned on and said, Neither will I kill you. I want power and authority. I do the things that I do. Now it comes down to me, and now it comes down to you. We are the baptized. We are the faithful. You and I hold the high office of Christian the highest office in the land. And now as you and I hold the office of Christian, today the Holy Spirit comes to you and me and asks us some important questions about Jesus, the object of our faith, the one who holds the office of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who has all the power and authority and all the heavens and the earth. Questions such as these. So do you really believe that your Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, has the power and authority to rule over your life? Do you really believe that Jesus has the power and authority to come to you and speak to you in his word and tell you what to do and what not to do and what to believe and what not to believe? you really believe that your Jesus has the power and the authority to come to you when you are overpowered and overwhelmed and oppressed by the sins that you've committed against God and your fellow man with the guilt and the shame and the sins committed against you from suffering and pain and say to you, your sins are forgiven because he's paid for them in full with his life body, blood. Does your Jesus have the power and authority to come to you and say, because you are a Christian, you have faith in him as Lord and Savior and Redeemer, you are justified by grace through faith. Even though you have sinned, it is just as though you have not sinned at all. Do you really believe that your Jesus the one who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who has all the power and authority in the heavens and the earth, is going to come to you, one of his servants, in your hour and time of need, and help you according to your need, with all of his power and all of his authority. By faith, we all know the answer to those questions. The answer to all those questions is the same. One word. My faith, the answer is yes. Because he is the King of Kings. Because he is the Lord of Lords. All power 
the people of the world. And he says to all the people of the world, the same words that he spoke to Adam and Eve as they echo across the eons and the centuries. As he says, go ahead. Because you too can be just like God. And the only book all comes to us, and the bond of the world comes to us, which teaches us to believe that our God does not exist, that Jesus is not the Son of God, the Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So throw away God, and throw away Jesus, and throw away all of his power, and throw away all of his authority. When one takes Jesus out of the equation, and God out of the equation, that leaves only one thing, sinful man. And the words the serpent spoke to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden also come to everybody in all the world. Go ahead. You too can be just like saying that is a hard to get away from. You are God. And so Adam and Eve to disobey and eat the forbidden fruit. And the old evil Paul, the serpent, is alive and well. He comes to everybody on the face of the earth and says, forget about God, forget about Jesus, forget about all that power and authority. You are God. You have all the power. You have all the authority. You are the master of your own destiny. You have all the power. You have all the authority. You have all the freedom. You have the right. You have the choice to go anywhere you want to go, to say anything you want to say, to do anything you want to do. So go ahead. And do it, because you are God. Too many times we find ourselves going to the wrong place, saying the wrong stuff, doing the wrong things. Finding ourselves falling short. So we look to our Lord and say, 
moment of every day, we depend upon Jesus being the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the one to whom all power and authority in the heavens and the earth have been given. As you and I go through life, you and I have to encounter storms and winds and waves that toss us to and fro beyond our control. At those times, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords promises to come into your life and my life, your world and my world, your storm and my storm, and say to you and me, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. I am here, and I am here for you, to attend to your need without power and authority in the heavens and the earth. I am the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and you are mine. So the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, enters into your world, your storm, your universe. He looks at everything chaotic and out of control. And he says four words. Be quiet. Be still. When he speaks, all, all creation must listen. When he commands, all of creation must obey.
you and I go through life, sometimes you and I have to go through the darkness. The darkness of frustration, depression, despair, broken hearts, broken dreams. Well, no, when the darkness comes your way. When it comes your way, you're Jesus has promised to come into your life, in your world. So take courage.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up shouts upon you. 